Good morning, my friends from Dixwell Avenue United Church of Christ. My name is Sarah Birmingham Drummond. I've had the privilege of worshiping with you and preaching with you many times in the past. And the Reverend Dr. Jerry Streets has been an important mentor in my life. He kindly invited me to participate in your Lenten series. And I am really excited to share with you some thoughts about women's voices and the journey of Lent and Holy Week. I'm starting my reflection with a topic that I never would have expected myself to want to share, which is I want to talk a little bit about Jane Fonda. Now, my exposure to Jane Fonda up until recently was to know that she was an actor and an activist and somebody whose aerobics tapes got me in shape when I was in middle school. And uh, she introduced me to what's become a lifelong love for fitness through group classes. Now I'm a big fan of Zumba, but Jane Fonda was the one who hooked me on aerobics. But recently I learned a lot more about Jane Fonda because a documentary about her life has dropped on HBO and it's called Jane Fonda in Five Acts. What's notable about the structure of this documentary is that the five acts each have a title, the first four of which are the names of men in Jane Fonda's life. The first is called Henry, and it's about Jane Fonda's very powerful father, who himself was an Academy Award winning actor. Then the next chapters are the names of Jane Fonda's husbands, of whom she had, yes, three, and who each in their own right was a really powerful and influential person. The last act is entitled Jane. And in that last act, we see this woman in her late 70s, um, uh, on the cusp of 80, feeling for the first time like she is the agent who's shaping her own life. I'm really moved by that structure because a lot of women in my life, especially women in my family, could describe their life in chapters the same way. I had a really powerful father. My mother had a really powerful father. Obviously, my sister had the same father as me. And all of us coming from more patriarchal families uh, knew what it felt like to have our lives shaped in important ways by the men around us. It's no wonder that many women have trust issues given the likelihood that the men who shape their lives sometimes in their early years might not always be the most trustworthy. And sometimes our families are defined by the absence of men. And that absence of men sometimes reminds us or it points to um, a shortage of resources, a shortage of support. Now, the idea that women depend on men is the ultimate myth. But that illusion of dependence can really distort women's understanding of themselves and their own identity. Now, dependency isn't always a bad thing. As the song goes, we all need somebody to lean on. And I had a wonderfully loving father, and also I have a wonderfully loving mother, and my friends and my family lean on each other all the time. There's nothing wrong with that. The question is, however, what do we trust? And are we directing our trust to that which is worthy? Enter the scene, my favorite verse of scripture, which I'll share with you now. It comes from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, beginning at the 17th chapter and the seventh verse. Blessed are those who trust in the Lord, whose trust is in the Lord. They shall be like a tree planted by water, sending out its roots by the stream. It shall not fear when heat comes, and its leaves shall stay green. In the year of drought, it is not anxious, but it does not cease to bear fruit. That in which we place our trust is such an important decision. And that in which we should and must place our trust is God. No man, no woman 
no human being should receive the burden of us trusting them unless we have a strong foundation under us of constantly trusting God. It's too much pressure for people and God can handle our trust. Now, you might think that you know what I'm about to say. You might think that the next thing Sarah is going to go into is about how crucial it is to cultivate a living relationship with God in order that we might be able to trust God. But here's some good news. We don't have to earn God's trust or earn the ability to trust God. God is always there for us. God loves us and expects nothing from us in order that we might place our trust in God. That is the very nature of grace. We don't earn it. We don't need to deserve it, but it's always there. We could be the most incredibly dutiful Christians in the world, or we could run away from the church and God and Jesus for years, but that stream still flows. I believe my life is better when I live in a Christian way, in Christian community, but I didn't have to earn the water next to which my tree is planted. My colleague, Sharon Kugler, succeeded the Reverend Dr. Jerry Streets as Yale University's chaplain. And recently I heard her giving some advice to students that I've tried to incorporate into my own life. She encourages students not to look at their phone first thing when they wake up in the morning. Instead, she says, look out your window. First thing when you wake up, look out your window and remember that you're part of something much bigger than what you're about to see in that tiny little screen. I've adapted her advice by waking up every morning and before I look at my computer or my phone or my to-do list on my notebook in front of me, I look outside at a tree. I take a moment and I look at that tree and I think that tree is deeply rooted. It is finding all of the nutrients that it needs and it didn't need to ask, do I trust those nutrients? Do I trust those roots? No, it's planted solidly. I can root myself in something greater than the here and now. I can root myself in that which gives nourishment whether there is rain or sun, flood or wind, I can root myself in God. And when I do that, all of my other trusting relationships are much more manageable and they make a lot more sense. As we make our way through this holy week, we are going to find ourselves reminded that love and life always win. There are times in holy week where we might forget and feel like the tree is planted in the desert and this drought around, it's not going to make it. But it does, and it will. We don't need to necessarily feel like that's true, but on some deep level, we can trust that life will come again. Amen and amen.